Well, you know, growing up in the 80s in Philly, it was obviously, you know, the epicenter for DJing with Jeff and Cash Money and DJ Miz. Yeah, so Eon and I then both went up to college in Boston. So we were, again, in the same city, which kind of helped us keep evolving our demo, you know. And then our junior year of school, Bobito comes up to BU, to Boston University, and hosts a party. And Eon rhymes for him. And he says, wow, like, I like you, you're dope. Why don't you come down and rhyme on KCR? And I always equate that experience to, like, us getting the confidence we needed to keep doing it, you know? That helped Eon develop his style. Like, right then, everyone was trying to rap, rhyme like Akinelli, you know, like... Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and so the, the early High and Mighty demos, Eon is rhyming kind of in that style, but when Bobito came up and, and, and gave him that, that you know, cosign, it really did wonders for our confidence. So I, I don't know if you remember, but Tommy Boy was then starting to sign a lot of independent artists. Through their black label? Yeah. Yeah. So I think we were about to sign with them, if I'm not mistaken. And then at the last minute, like, uh, Raucous came in with a, a label deal offer. So we were like, oh, shit, they're going to let us put out the High and Mighty album, the Cage album, the Smut Peddlers album. And it was beautiful. Like, we couldn't pass that up. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, you know, and I remember back in those days, those hardcore hip hop days, going into a McDonald's and seeing you guys with Paul uh, in there, and I already knew Paul's Paul with with M. I mean, not that Eminem was Eminem yet. Um, you know, and, and you guys were definitely early on that ex that, that experience. Um, and then Eminem actually featured on this project that that you guys released. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, once again, he's not the Eminem yet. You know, he's he's definitely building, building that. Um, but could you tell me on that first album? I see credited was Rashida Jones, and Rashida Jones, if you can, you know, she I I know, I know she is. So for so everyone, she's uh, an actress. Uh, uh, you know, she does a lot of comedic based stuff. Um, and also Quincy Jones' daughter, you know, but how does Rashida Jones and the amazing High and Mighty connect? That happened through Mark Ronson. He was dating her at the time, and he we mixed that song, Dick Starbuck, and one by one, the Smut Feather song, <laughs> at, at his crib. So... <laughs> Well, you know, a fun fact that's kind of similar uh, to Raji P. Henson, she's on Sadat X's first solo album. Really? On Loud Records, yeah. She's on a skit, you know, just talking. Like, and then I asked him about it, and he's like, she used to just hang. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's pretty, pretty amazing. What are some of the things that had occurred uh, for you guys as a, as a unit that was, that, that was pretty dope. That was that that felt like a win. I know it's gonna sound corny, but like just doing it, like just making records. Like Eon and I were such hardcore fans, you know. Then we would go see the Beastie Boys at the Spectrum with Public Enemy, and we'd say, "Hey, like maybe we could do that." But like it was always just a dream. So to actually be like putting the records out and seeing your name on the center part of the record was like a big deal, you know. And I even love that you, uh, you guys had the sense where you even brought Beetlejuice along for for some of the the, the events that that I would actually see him. <laughs> for those that know, this is the Howard Stern uh, dude. Um, but where does that whole process have happen in? Um, <laughs> I know, I know, it's just trippy. I know it's just so odd. I guess that's more of a personal <laughs> question. That is just like, but it it was captivating. You know, it was it was social. It was it was relevant. You know, conceptually, and it was also fun. It looked like you guys were having natural fun. Yeah, you know, like back then there was a little bit of shock rap happening. You know, who could say the most shocking thing? And and now it's like, you know, considered just commonplace. Holy shit! Like Beetlejuice is on their <laughs> cover, and and the booklet somebody's like midget tossing him. You know, we were kind of like. We all, <laughs> We also wanted to get on Howard Stern, I'm sure, you know, so there was always 
Smart. No, but that's 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 cool. That's that's playing the game and trying to get trying to get that cooking. So, for none other than DJ Mighty Mai, it is time for you to show off your gems, brother. So walk us through. You know what you have. Okay. Well, let me start off with this first high and mighty demo tape when Mr. Eon's name was MC Magnum. <laughs> MC Magnum. <laughs> I mean, I just got some good tapes here, you know, Stat. Art wow. imitating life. Uh, <laughs> yes. Audio 2. Wow. Sealed show Rob G tape. Yes, the first guy that wanted to knock me out. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I said this. I was a little kid. I said the snap lyrics to him thinking they were his lyrics, and he got <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I didn't know. We were, on, we were on a Smut Peddler's tour with MOP, and I was really drunk. And I went up to them after the show, and I said, I just want to let you guys know I produced the legendary street team with you and Cool G Rap on the Lyricist Lounge. And then I, like, kind of dropped my drink, and they go, oh, man, he's drunk. He's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> the GOAT, of course, Criminal Minded Tape. Yes, that is definitely a GOAT. So this is probably my my most prized golden era item. It's Maurice Cheeks who played for the Sixers. His original blazer with his name on the back. <laughs> All right, hold on one second. Hold on, keep those in your hand. <laughs> the fact that you go from cassettes to a smack in the face right there <laughs> is appreciated. <laughs> Wow, could you explain that again? Now, this is game one? Yep, this was the, the legendary Hall of Fame point guard for the Sixers and then the Knicks. And these were auctioned off, and my boy Air Rev got the other one, this kid who we grew up with, who was kind of an original member of the High and Mighty. And if you check out his Instagram, Air Rev, A-I-R-R-E-V, -A he has the, the craziest sneaker collection you've ever seen. So, so he has someone one. you should encourage to come on. Yes. Beautiful. Let's see. Wow. I'm going to show you some of my authentic NBA shorts. Yes. Okay, I collect NBA shorts, and I know you're an NBA man. Yeah, we were so proud of you, by the way, when we first saw you hosting those big things, man. Thank you, brother. I was like, holy shit, is that these? I didn't know. Like, So I was like, <laughs> first time I saw you was on TV, you know? That's amazing. Great job. Um, these are 1983 Sixers shorts. <laughs> I think Eon has a pair of these too. Wow. These are my Detroit Pistons Dave Bing joints. Wow. Orlando Magic joints. Spectacular. The Nick Andersons. And these are my my Kobe All-Star <laughs> You know that, that year with him and Dirk Nowitzki where they wore these uniforms? They're amazing. Yes. Wow. Definitely, uh, you definitely implemented the sports because you had the Eastern Conference uh, records uh, that you oh, yeah. guys... Sports was always, always tied into our music. You know, that's one thing. Like, Ian, Ian and I were never like rapping about things we didn't know so mm -hmm. sure it was porn and sports and dumb shit but we were never like you know pretending to be gangsters or whatever <laughs> and i love that <laughs> and oh. you had you had i don't know if this is one of the gems that you'll show or if you have it there but you had a picture on your wall at your apartment do you have that there somewhere yes you, you know which one i'm talking about the one with me and Dizzy Gillespie or yes. the one with me and my dad in front of the world? With, with Dizzy Gillespie, the story, yes. Okay, I good. Do. I want to make... Do. Okay, cool. Continue, brother. This is a concert that me and my crew in Philly went to um, in 1989. MC Life, Big Daddy Kane, and Cool C. <laughs> 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 Hold on, hold on, don't take that away yet. Wait, let me let me bask in that image. 
It's a little small. No, but that's fine. Wow. Come on, y'all. Come on, guys. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Now, how about how about that cool C steady B story? Crazy. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> What's going on, Philly? What's in the water? Killed the first female cop ever in the city. <laughs> wow. Did you guys just hear that unfun fact he just dropped? <laughs> it, it is not that fun. I know it's an unfun fact. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So I, um, I'm also a big vintage tennis. I'm, I'm a big tennis player these days. I so love I collect it. collect vintage tennis stuff from the 80s. Um, so here's some of my stuff. This is an Andre Agassi jean jacket. <laughs> Come on, y'all. That's the whole level of John Wait, McEnroe. you're going fast, bro. Andre Agassi jean jacket, guys. Okay, go. John McEnroe sweater vest. <laughs> Yvonne Lendl sweater vest. Fire. Look at that. You no, know, that's really nice, bro. Wow. Another, another Lendl one, the Argyle. <laughs> and this is my Stefan Edberg Adidas jacket. 1989, the number. <laughs> whose flat top ruled in actually <laughs> whose mullet ruled in '89? <laughs> I wow. also collect um vintage sports specialty hats. You know the ones they used to wear when they got drafted with the script. Yes. So this is my corduroy eagles one. <laughs> <laughs> this is my leather Sixers one, which is a, a beauty. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely clean. Wow. Another eagles. Fire. Man. This one's pretty dope. That's beautiful. You know, with the tags. <laughs> yes. Salute Randall Cunningham. He really made me pay attention, bro. <laughs> my my one of my first and only gifts from an uncle was like a used Eagles sweater, uh, and I was like, okay, what is this that's going on in Philadelphia? And then Randall, <laughs> this this became a thing for me. Continue. Oh, yeah. This is me and Bob at the High and Mighty record release party. He's DJing it. <laughs> you, remember, you remember Milo, Fat Milo with the orange beard? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yo, looking good. I love it. <laughs> um, I pulled the B-Boy document. Remember the VHS? Yes. Like the video uh, promos? Now that's so this this was a certain type of pro is this is the one it's like a cardboard right. kind of lights right it's disposable yeah. probably right yes they are there I have I have uh this is interesting though that you show that because somewhere I have I have two I have a Busta Rhymes one and I have an Eminem one for the video uh that wasn't like that so it was uh hi my name is was the hot one but then there was the other one but it was done like that and it has like a there's a limited amount of plays you can't play right. like so it's right. it's amazing that you have it sealed keep it that way that's that's a catch now i have these as posters but i might as well just show them as pictures too this one is me and my dad in front of the world trade centers wow <laughs> the harmonic is amazing <laughs> and here's the one you like with dizzy so this right here, I had the good fortune to actually go to your apartment in the city, uh, in, in New York. And, uh, I was just like, wait, what is that? <laughs> you know, cause for, for the, for everyone watching, he has it blown up on his living room and it's just, it's just amazing. It just takes you like, wow. Like the, your dad was the plug, 
you got that close to get a really nice photo. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, in that era to get a good photo is is pretty pristine. And, and then look I at remember that uh, necklace he's wearing. Wow. And that's at Carnegie Hall, backstage at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Remember you had the significant other at one time who had a nightmare with me, who who I was Don't chasing, <laughs> and I, I never went to your house again. I was like, oh my god, I don't. Yovana. <laughs> it's like he was trying to kill us. I was like, I'm never going to your house again. You're what? a scary dude. <laughs> That's amazing. That's phenomenal, my brother. Um, you know from. So tennis is your is is kind of your escapism. Yeah, that's really 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 good. Super Not active. All you gotta be like you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really great. Now, how is it that uh, you come to a place if you can? Uh, evolution is a great thing, right? Pivoting is a great thing. Me from being an MC to transitioning to doing hosting and stuff like that. And then you, of course, was always a DJ. But when you made the move to Vegas, that's one that takes, um, you know, it, it, it takes a commitment, you know what I mean? To, to kind of pick up and go. Um, where are you at that moment um, in that period? Well, I was slaving away in the New York clubs for years, making $250 a night, DJing from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Now, don't get me wrong, like I wouldn't have traded that for anything, but after carrying three crates of records up four, four you know, stairwells, it, it became like, you know, so then the opportunity to come to Vegas and make the kind of money I was going to make after years of kind of like paying... I got that battery thing. Um, <laughs> so the opportunity to make real dough was like too hard to, to pass up. You know, it was like after years of, you know, just grinding in New York, it was like this was kind of like the DJ heaven. Only had the DJ for two and a half hours a night. I had an opener and a closer in Vegas. If like one of the techniques breaks, there's a new one there in a new box ready to, you know, like I wasn't used to that kind of like professionalism so, yeah it was hard i didn't think i'd last that long out here but you know 12 years later <laughs> that that's a gem <laughs> that's spectacular and and you know i was super proud to 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 see you in that light because here we are um kind of finding our footing you know what i mean as 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 people who 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 you know started in in such a, a wild time and wild era but you know when i seen you out there it was really it was really a, a proud moment because you know we've not we've traveled the world but we did it all off of uh you know the foundation and of the genre we both fell in love with uh hip-hop so that was that was definitely a, a great thing so you showed some amazing gems young man and, and 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 I appreciate it. Are there any other fire you have? Can I show a couple more? Are you gonna ready? To yes, ready yes, yes. This is what we do here. Look at this original Nike box. Uh. Some more tennis. These were called the Mac Attacks in around 1985. The John McEnroe's and me, Eon, and Air Rev. Like this is like our holy grail. And you would, if you played enough indoor tennis, your foot, your toe would come through the sole very quickly. So, <laughs> wow, I love it. These are called the Air Aces, the ones that Cool G Rap has on the back of the Symphony cover. And <laughs> fun facts, fun facts, fun facts, fun facts. <laughs> yes. Um. Happy bir happy belated birthday. It was Coogee Rap's birthday yesterday he, because uh, almost like what you just said right there in the Don't uh, Erase Racism Bismarcky music video, he was a Buffalo Bills hat and that's how I became uh, a, a Buffalo Bills fan because I thought Bills was money. I didn't think it, I didn't, you know, 
Go, continue. No, you remember that era? I love that era where your hat meant something. Like if you wore a Utah jazz hat, it's because you used to like to sample jazz. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, my Clyde Frazier signed by him. Compliments of Air Rev. Hold on, roll it! Don't take it away! Orange. Never a color I could pull off. I used to love orange in the sneaker store. Ooh, look at the binoculars. And on your gone. chin? On your chin, right? <laughs> well, you have the, the beard? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Wow. This is my Beastie Boys Hello Nasty DJ bag. <laughs> yes! And DJ Jules gave this to me. DJ Jules was a legendary downtown New York DJ in the in the 90s. So he put me on to a lot of records and he works for a company called Herschel now and they made that. Fire. All right, now I'm gonna show you my posters. Please. What up, Scheme Richards? We got Q in here. What's up, fellas? First, a couple signed vinyl. This is... um. My suicide, uh, 12 inch signed by Busy B, which we sampled on the first B-Boy document. So that was cool. That's appropriate. Here's my uh, Ain't No Half Step in 12 inch signed by the God. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And here's my signed Sarai Boo Holy War 12 inch. Holy war, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, now I'm going to show you my posters. The level, yo. <laughs> Holy war, guys. Yikes. Okay, now this is a poster of, I don't know if you remember, like in bar mitzvahs or confirmations, you used to be able to get a computer printout of a photo yes so this is a t-shirt of me and eon from when we're like <laughs> mr e yes. and milo b <laughs> wow some rocky balboa cards Oh my God! My favorite poster, a source poster back from. I don't know why this this ring is getting in the way, right? Yeah, it is. Yo, bro, I didn't know they made an actual. Po That's dope. No, it's all good. You, get, you yeah. <laughs> halo, halo. We got KRS got a one eight hundred cards for kids. KRS oh, one card for kids. <laughs> wow I was always proud of this because of the cats that were on here that's a good one brother that's a really good one what a time what a time I mean to be on the same poster with high tech come on <laughs> phenomenal Look at this bad boy. Wow. This is a, that that that's a man. Some of these. Yes, that's what was in my mind. Guys, he's not playing. <laughs> We got to do a drinking game. Every time I hit the harmonica, drink, fam. That's it, viewers. <laughs> That's crazy, brother. Oh, Q Unique's on here. Yeah, he's a, he's a snack. That's my man. <laughs> Continue on. Wow. Bro, I think that so that was, that was that. Well, the follow the lead, the Eric B and Rakim one. Um, I guess would the oldest one be the T-shirt? 
that's the, in that frame. The cool C T shirt? No, the the one with you you and Eon. The oh, bar mitzvah. Yeah. That's wow. from like nineteen eighty five, I'd say. That and the John McEnroe sneakers are the two oldest. <laughs> What's that? It's that from the song with us and Eminem, Platinum Island. Remember that? that yes. Uh, Is it the last hit? Yeah. That's what is it like to be on show off your gems and and know that there's a community that that appreciates the items you've been showing. Oh, it's beautiful because trust me, in Vegas, nobody recognizes when I wear my all leather Sixers hat out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always the the catch twenty two, right? You have all these gems that you're proud of, but no one else really recognizes. They right, and that's why that's why I was like, you know, let me. You, this is natural. Like, look at this guy. He's going through the vaults of amazingness. Oh, see? This is this is when you turn the thing around, Milo. You turn the thing around. You you what press you the you press it and then it turns <laughs> the camera. Look at this. Come on, guys. That's That's like the this. better one where he's looking down at me like that? Yes. This is Louis Armstrong smoking a joint. <laughs> That's on the wall in his house, guys. These are all photos from my dad's book uh, called Baseline. This is a young Aretha. Okay, hold on, brother. These are photos from your dad's book. Yeah, my dad wrote a jazz book about this uh, bass player here named Milton Hinton. This guy who... <sighs> was a bass player for Cab Calloway and everyone, but he also took pictures his whole career. So the book is his story and the photos. Like here's Dizzy with a bunch of kids. <sighs> Cab Calloway. Yeah! Yes! Yes! What is it that keeps you uh, positive, smiling, and, 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 and hungry? It's people like you keeping this alive and, you know, a little bit the internet also keeps it going. You see him? He's missing his leg. Wait, what's going on, B? You got a hood rat cat? Did that yep. cat do ad-libs on MOP records? Yep. <laughs> you bought him like that the, he got caught in the moving engine of a car a chevy and he lost his leg and then they we still saved him so they named him chevy because he was in a chevy wow Thanks for having me, man. It was so much fun. I, I never get to show off any of my tennis clothes. <laughs> and um, you're a real mensch, as we say in the in the Jewish community. Yes, yes. Salute, <laughs> salute to uh, to to you, to that, and all all the greatness. And now we get into none other your partner uh, in crime since you guys were young uh, jump ropers bringing double dutch to philadelphia uh eon <laughs> so success i love you thank you for for being a great individual throughout all the years i love you too brother and still be my friend even though homegirl thought i was gonna murder her in a dream <laughs> yeah oh! <laughs> do you like wow my, my jewish tan line Hi! Oh! Hello! So I'm a nerd, and I have comic books, baseball cards, and some Star Wars figures, and then hip-hop. <laughs> so, and I'm not, I'm not playing, you know, let's start with comic books. All right. I, Can you just, okay. All right, no, I'm going to go quick. Watch this. It's, it's, it's great. This is going to be weird, and it's quick. So here's X-Men 94, which I have, which is the first run of the new X-Men. So this is my best and most beautiful comic book that I have. And 
Farrell Munch knows this very well, and this was our thing. Now, my next thing is I'm a real gigantic Wait. Star Wars fan. You know, what was one of those highlights for High and Mighty? Uh, it actually has to do with something you were involved with, which was the Ross Guild Festival, which I believe was like in the summer of 1998. It, it was, was the 1998. The arsonist. Talk uh, about it. Company flow, um, mass influence, nonfiction, the high and mighty, and Pharaoh Munch. Here's so this show is called Show Off Your Gems, and he is talking about... Oh, wow, there it is. And that's when you knew that this D story was a star because he was the one who was on stage who was in front of 10,000 people having them the most hyped. And I remember <laughs> me and Milo being like, yo, we got to step our shit up. Even though it's just a DJ and me, one guy jumping around and it's not what they're doing, we got to like step it up. So I, to be honest, like really, I'm, I'm being serious. Like you showed us how to do it as a performer. And so you have to understand for us, it was one of our first songs. This is Boulevard Connections tour. Here's, here we go. Okay, so now this is a 1980 Yoda Star Wars figure. And here it is, here's the back. You know, it's physically in the, in the, in the yellow. It's very yellowed. And this is from 1980, the original John. You can see the price. Price is, uh, is rubbed out here. So this is Yoda, original Empire Strikes Back 1980 figure. For some reason, I have it in the package. I don't know why. Wow. There you go. Bro, he kept it. Yes! Woo! So there he is. He has a little snake that comes around and paws and wow. some other, you know, some other details are pretty cool. He has a cane, I think. Yeah, you can see his the cane on this side, on the on this side here, the cane. And so he has a snake and a cane. Wow. And that, that's Yoda, man. That's from nineteen eighty. So that's 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 fucking old, man. That's phenomenal. This shit a is gem indeed. fucking old. You know, like, think about it, man. I'm born in 1972. If someone showed me something that was 40 years old, you know, that's 1932. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at this shit. It's, it, it's weird how the older you get and everything, like, people collected shit. And so, you know, I got that stuff. You know, that's another. Um, one of the very rare Star Wars figures, which is a gentleman named Yak Face. And here he is. And he's in a, a little plastic bag, which was the original plastic bag. I've never really taken it out. And I'm trying to, he's just a, you know, he's just a figure. He was, I think, like a, like a Return of the Jedi extra. You only got it through a mail order or one of those type of things. Like you send points and <laughs> that's how you get it. Yeah, you had your, you know, like, look at this, John. Like, even look, like, so here's the Yoda, John, right? So that was that shit right there. Yeah. General Mills proof <laughs> of motherfucking purchase. You had to clip these drawings out. You had to put them in an envelope. And that's how you got Boba Fett in 1980. <laughs> I mean, that, I don't have that one, but it's a true story. That's what wow. you did. You, you clip the shit out and you put it, you know, you, you did that. That's a yes. true story. No, that, that is. With the Phantom Menta. Phantom Menace came before the movie came out. There was this item, which you could pre-order. And I'm going to show you this. This oh was a figure God. that was introduced. This is, I have two of them. This one, you see, you. I've broken the tape here. Now, the other one, I have not broken the tape. So I bought two. And then... So I have two different ones. Now, here's what it is. From 1999, this is the original Powers of the Force Mace Windu figure, which was only available prior to the Phantom Menace. Wow. I have one more other Star Wars figure, which was, for some reason, I have in a pack, which is a 
useless Ewok. And, and this was when you could get the free um, Anakin Skywalker old man version in the mail, which I have, but I don't, you know, I don't have that right here. All right, now. Oh, wait, bro, you better cut it out. You better not call that. Yes, exactly. Like, we are just in awe with this well, amazingness. this is 1983, so this isn't, you know, this is like, you know, this was like, you know, I don't know. This is, this is that figure. There he is up close. Come on, guys. He's an Ewok. Come on, fam. So this is 83. Um, and for, I think, I think my mom probably bought these as, and I'm going to tell you what they were, as like when we would go to birthday parties as... Something that she would have for to throw in, you no, know, yeah, just, for the presents, like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I forget Jimmy's birthday. Let's yeah. give him a Yoda. Let's <laughs> give him a a Lumox or whoever the hell this guy is. You know, like that's <laughs> that's just what it was back in 1987. They had the 10th annual. McDonald's All American High School Basketball Game at the. Philadelphia Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, <laughs> in some way, Mighty Mai and myself were able to access the actual players of the game. Now, what I have here is, and this was also in a sleeve, which I took out just for this podcast, so you're welcome. Is a mint, is a <laughs> no, mint for this condition. radio show. Here it is. It's a mint condition, 1987 McDonald's All American High School Basketball Game Program, April 12th, 1987, the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania program, which we, me and Milo, got access to the floor where we got autographs. Now, I'm going to show you. One page because you know, I can show you a couple pages, but it's really like I know say, I'm with you. All, on I'd that. like to show this for Air Rev and M's and Milo and everything. Within this item is a beautiful ad, which we're gonna go for the sneaker heads. I'm gonna try to get this in here. Okay, hold on. Now this is from 1987. Six, wow. seven, seven. Sorry. Now, this is a Puma ad, which, you, you know, it's like, hold on, I mean, <laughs> I, I it can't really show. It's, it's, it's okay. Okay, now, across from this, me and Mighty Mike got autographs. This is the best page I'm going to show you. There are two guys here. A, one gentleman whose name is Sean Higgins. He played for the University of Michigan, and he played on the 1980, 1989 National Championship team of, Unite, of Michigan, who beat Seton Hall in the final. Now, the other person on this page is a well-known New York Nick celebrity, and this is from when they were high school. Now, look, the first one is Sean Higgins who played for the University of Michigan. Yes. He was on the 1989 team. And there you can kind of see the, his page. I'll, 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 I'll pull it back in a second. I just want to show the autographs. And then here's a really beautiful gem. There's a man named Larry Johnson. Yes. And there's, let's see, where's his, okay. There's his uh, autograph. And if you see what happened was he committed to SMU, but I believe he had some issues with grades or something where he never went to SMU, and he went and became a legend for the U, you know, UNLV Running Rebels, yes. as well as being a famous New York Nick. So this is 1987 when we, and you know, me and Milo met these people, and we met them. There are other ones, hold on. On the back here, this is for Philly, is John Cheney's autograph. Like here's Mark Macon, I don't have his autograph, but he was a famous 
player who played for Temple University. Deb. Yes. And here's Dennis Scott. So I'd like to also, you know, show this, which is my autograph, Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> is there a cocaine residue on that? <laughs> No, there is not. There's not any residue. I tested Damn it. it! My grandfather was very into baseball and he had a lot of different um, collectibles. And this one I'd like to show, and you only have to look real close up. This is a Joe DiMaggio signed baseball. And I, I'm not, I literally, you know, you can kind of see it. Here's the horn. <laughs> it's old. It's in a case. I took it out of the case. I don't really take it out of the case a lot. But I got that. There, there's that show. Oh my god! I put it back in the case. <laughs> um, it's back in the case now. Wow. I don't know if there are a lot of people who are into baseball cards and stuff. I'm, I, I put these, I lay these all on my floor. And I'm going to have to do some weird kind of thing. No, turn... <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I bought baseball cards from when I was about six years old, which is 1978. There was a kid who lived in the same apartment complex that I lived in. His name was Al Goldberg, bless his heart. And I took his shit for 20 bucks. Here, we'll start off. This is a gentleman by the name of Willie Mays. I think it's 1967 card. <laughs> the same year, a gentleman named Hank Aaron. Oh my God! I think one year before, this is a Pete Rose, like his third year card. All right, now we have a, some, a rookie, a gentleman. You may have heard of him. His name is Joe Morgan. He started on a team called the Houston Club 45s. And there's his, this is 1965. Now, this is a not great Mickey Mantle card because it was very late in his career, 1964. Now, we'll go into a lot of rookies from here on. We have a gentleman by the name of Bob Gibson, who was, you know, one of the best pitchers of all time. We have... <laughs> Yep, you better fucking harm Bro, harmonics. I, I, I want to do it throughout the whole no, thing. You, you can do it. This one, you can do as many harmonicas as you want. You're about to see about 17 Hall of Famers rookie cards. Oh nerd, my God! nerd time, nerd time, nerd time, nerd time. Okay, this is a gentleman. You may have heard of him. Let's fucking go, Mets. And motherfucking Tom Seaver. Straight up. 1969. What? Now, rookie cards. A little gentleman, you may have heard of him. Frank O'Harris, football. <laughs> now we go to 1975, a couple of different ones. These were when they would have different players on the same card. This one highlights a gentleman named Gary Carter, RIP, Montreal Expos, New York Mets, Hall of Famer. Next one, another one, peace, peace to Boston, my Beantown people, Jim Rice, on the rookie card. Now, we have a gentleman Hall of Famer named Robin Yao. This is his rookie. Now we're going to shift over. We go to a gentleman named Brett, George <laughs> Brett. He used to shit his pants. I don't know if you've ever heard these stories, but he used to actually shit his pants <laughs> during games and during other times in his life. Next one, New York Mets forever. Motherfucking Keith Hernandez. What? <laughs> There he is. Now, here's an interesting one of the greatest rookie of all time, maybe. He was the rookie of the year and MVP. And look, his name is Fred Lynn. And that's not his sleeve. That's actually an error or a weird production flaw where they just had white right there. <laughs> so that's just a little bit of a tidbit. Now, next, Dale motherfucking Murphy. You may have heard of him. 1977. Next, the Hawk, my man, Andre Dawson, rookie. There we go. Then another one, they put him again on the same. 
in 78, but that's not his real rookie, but it is Lance Parrish, who's Ooh. also a rookie. Now, Eddie, Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer. Now, we have Jack Morris, very famous. I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer. Detroit Tiger. Now, we go. Ricky Henderson. <laughs> now, we're going to talk. I'm going to say this to Phil Flava, who may or may not be watching. Him and I are in agreement. This is the greatest baseball player of all time. And thus, there are four <laughs> rookie players because that's all I did. <laughs> all right. Now, we got Tim Raines, who was on the Yankees, I think. Yes. Expos 1981. There he is. All right. Now, we're, we have a weird flaw weirdo card, but this is an amazing one. Goddamn Joe Montana rookie. Does everyone like that one? There you go. That's all you need to see. <laughs> and then we're going to go into some of the more recent Hall of Famers and greats of our time. A gentleman, this was 1982 Topps card. Cal Ripken, Future Stars, there he is. I have two of those. And then we have Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, 1983 Topps. Two of those. We have Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer, rookie, 1983. And then we have two Ryan Sandberg, 1983 rookies, Hall of Famer. And then we have two gentlemen, you may have heard of them, Mark McGuire. Um, <laughs> and this is the Olympic team, baseball team cards before, you know, he was on a you know, before he was on the A's. And then I got, and then you got a, this guy, Jerry Rice, rookie. Out of nowhere, you know, why not? Just Jerry Rice. And then, you know, a guy who may belong in the Hall of Fame, may not. The uh, 1986 traded set card, which was a rookie prelim card for the seri for the season before or after. Uh, this is Barry Bonds. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. And you may have heard of him as well. <laughs> so these are some of the highlights of the cards because I was a real card guy. So wow. you know, I was a real, real card guy, you know? What is uh, one of those hip hop stories that you enjoy telling uh, that that kind of brings a smile to your face? Um, I think it's the Pharaoh Mont story. So <laughs> it, it's the, it is the time that we were all together um, so it starts off with, you know, obviously organized confusion and Pharaoh and Prince Poe are like heroes to me. And I am going on tour with Pharaoh Munch. Really nice. You know, I'm like almost nervous. It's like meeting Elvis. I of swear. course. So it's like, hey, you know, but he's like the most humble human being and like, just like, you know, you you don't know what to expect when you meet people. And sure. So he was just, he, I was like, yo, yeah, man, yo, we're public. He's like, yo, I know your stuff. And he even, so he goes to me, goes, yo, so on that Smut Peddler song, when you say, you know, I had a, a line about munchy cheese, he was like, yo, at first I thought you dissed me. And like, I was like, my mind was, I was like, no, no, I, I like, didn't want to be that guy. I was like, no, yeah. I was like, no, I just said that and blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, we were talking about the X-Men, like the thing I showed before, the X-Men comic book for like literally two hours. And then I go, yo, I'm really tired. And I remember being like, I'm going to turn off the, the TV. He was like, can you leave it on? Like he needed like noise to go to sleep. <laughs> And like, I was like, all right. And I was just like, <sighs> you know, but like, you know, that's like a beautiful story of, you know, A, and then he was on our record. So it's like, you go from being a fan to, you know, doing it as a hobby to doing it like professionally or whatever you want. Right, to right, right. Like of course. Did to, you know, these beautiful moments. And, you know, first I have this Umi says most deaf promo and remember these tapes remember they were like either foam or style yeah like disintegratable or something crazy I just cracked it right and so it was like these 
weird, you know, like cassette singles. Here's a great one. Wow. A Smud Peddlers. You know, we had two of them. The next one I showed, this is one of, this is what Rockus did for us. They put these beautiful compilations together. Wow. And then here's another Smud Peddlers one. Fire. Yeah. Fire. There's a girl's booty. <laughs> Now, this is a funny one, and Milo might think this is ill, is, so, you know, I don't know if you've, you know, like, artists or whatever, all group, you know, groups have publishing, and you may have someone putting your stuff on different shows, or a movie, or independent movie, or whatever. We were actually on ER, and this is, and I don't know if I've ever seen it, but this is something that I found that is from ER, which was a television show, back then and it's i guess the episode is rock paper scissors that this was a, an episode where our music was on the show wow so you know you that's know, I beautiful may, i may make 15 dollars every year from this, <laughs> four dollars right this is bottom feeders when they a played the video on french television but then we were in france and we went on the show and performed it and cage took a techniques turntable and smashed it on the ground like a fucking <laughs> like on some rock weirdo shit guitar shit so this is and this is, we did with Michael Rappaport, and we did a song called I Wanna. We went into the Joan Rivers part, because there was also a sketch on our album where it was Joan Rivers. We did the, I'm saying what, sorry. So tell me about the edible story. Oh, all right. So Michael Rappaport, we got connected with him, and he came to Milo's place. Me and Milo used to make our own cookies. We used to get shake from someone and we would literally put it with butter and make a cookie dough. But remember back then it was hit or miss. You had one cookie, which maybe had like two milligrams of weed. But then you had another one, which had like 25 milligrams of weed, which would like put you in like almost the hospital. And Mighty Mai, we, me and Mai have an incredible, incredible cookie story but yes so the edibles he had maybe he had like in between something that didn't work with him and he was like on the floor by himself and he was like <laughs> and i swear to god he was like i think they drugged me they gave me something and we could hear him and we were like laughing we were dying we were like no this he's bugging wow god help us yeah he was on the <laughs> kitchen floor he was on different floors and I, yeah, he was syndromic and we were just like, oh my God, it was really pretty bad. <laughs> and so, you know, that was, you know, that was what it was. It was awesome. I'd like to introduce to you an item from our album, which is, I'm going to show you the back. This was a standalone drawn, like here it is, it stands. So this was like at the point of purchase. This was like at the counter or something like that. I'd like to end with one thing that I'd, I'd like to show as a picture. In the foreground, you have basically an 18 year old alchemist. You have a mighty Mai. You have me, which you can't see is me. You have DJ Days, who did cuts on different records for us. Yes. You have right here, which you cannot see, and I'll get it closer, is Lord Seer. You have a young lady who is dating my friend Air Rev, who, you know, the who's in here. Aficionado. And then you have Reef from, you know, many different things. So I'm going to try to go in close and pan over. So you see Al. Look how young that bull Al is, man. <laughs> he got his little mustache and all that shit. Yes. Yeah. This is straight 18 year old alchemist. And this was like a celebratory dinner for when. It was the day after my birthday. So you see right here, I'm February 16th. So this was two um, 
17, 1998. I, it was like my celebratory dinner. Yes, Mighty Ma. It was at Carmine's. My wow. last thing I'd like to, to show you is, has to do a little bit with Philly. And it starts off with the record, which is the chosen ones. And the, and the point of this is the sticker. And I think this should start getting trending where you start showing stickers of different record stores that you bought your shit in. Now, this is from motherfucking Armand's Records on 10th and Market. Now, if you don't understand what this means to Philadelphia people, you don't understand. <laughs> Mighty Mike got a lot of drawings that are from other stores called Sound of Market and different things. And that's, I think that's kind of dope. Eon, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I want to ask you, you for having us. Of course. What was it like showing off your gems, brother? It's really beautiful. I, I, I envisioned my life of having some kind of retail space after COVID where the, I sell all these things and it's <laughs> hip hop, and it's baseball cards. And it's, it's only the, you thing. sell all those cards for $20. Yes, exactly. I love you, brother. Thank you so Thank much you. for being a great energy as well. Well, I thank you for everything and you know do it up I really I'm really glad to story thank you for everything and you know hip hop till we die let's do it <laughs> you're right all right once again this is uh Mr. Eon my name is Destroy earlier we had Mighty My uh the name of the show is called show off your gems so with that being said Mr. Eon thank you so much my brother peace, peace.